Welcome back to Market on Close. I'm Caroline Woods. Just a few minutes left in the trading day. It's time for the big picture. Let's welcome in Jeffrey Kleintop, Chief Global Investment Strategist at Charles Schwab. Jeffrey, always good to see you. Thanks for joining us on this Thanksgiving Eve. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. So, Jeff, we've had a lot of economic data today, and I'm curious if you think it's changed anything about the slowing but resilient U.S. economy narrative, because we've had two calls earlier on the show of a recession being inevitable. What's the data telling you? Well, the data is telling me we are in a cardboard box recession. We continue to see manufacturing in recession territory. As a matter of fact, we're about to on Friday, we're going to get the U.S. data, but tomorrow, Thursday, the rest of the world not celebrating Thanksgiving for some reason is coming out with their PMI numbers for this month. And they're likely to show the 15th month in a row of a decline and below 50 PMI reading globally. Now, the Purchasing Managers Index is my favorite economic indicator. And when it's below 50, that's a, a recession indicator. So we're seeing manufacturing in a recession around the world. So that's trade and, and the production of goods. We're seeing it in countries and across the world. It's one of the reasons why Germany's economy has been shrinking for four of the last five quarters, but we're not seeing it everywhere. France's economy is more service-oriented, so is the U.S., and that's why they've been able to buck that trend in the manufacturing downturn, focusing more on services, and you just have to ask Taylor Swift to know how well services have been doing in the last quarter or so. So I'm watching this, but one of the things that's interesting to me is the outlook for rate cuts next year on still broadly softer global economic growth. We got the University of Michigan numbers this morning, so the forecast by consumers for what they think long-term inflation is going to look like. And, well, they were higher. In fact, uh, the number is 3.2%, one of the highest readings we've seen this century for that uh, for that expectation for inflation. So still reinforcing that higher for longer narrative, uh, despite a global economic picture that's mixed. But in your notes, you say forget higher for longer. We might need to be thinking about higher forever. So what could that mean? Because obviously we know that the impact of higher interest rates is variable and lagging, and so we haven't even seen the full economic impact yet. So if there's a lot of optimism about rate cuts next year, what could this all mean? Yeah, so the markets, obviously, the, the long-term inflation expectations I mentioned in, in the U.S. are up. Europe and Japan, uh, their, their market-based expectations, the five-year, five-year forward. So looking at what the five-year yield might look like five years from now, you can find that the futures market is trading near decade highs. So for Japan and for Europe. So it's not just the U.S. where consumers and, and traders are really focusing on not just higher for longer, but be higher forever, at least uh, five years or, or longer in terms of the, uh, the market's outlook is pretty much forever. So if that's the case, stock market investors might want to be looking more for uh, lower valuations and a shift in leadership in this cycle, something we've been talking about from growth to value and from U.S. stocks to other markets with lower valuations. In fact, we continue to see this play out under the surface this month and overall this year, the average international stock is outperforming the average U.S. stock. I know it's hard to see because we've got this magnificent seven uh, pushing the S&P 500 on a capitalization weighted basis. But if you look at the average stock across the market or even within every sector, you're seeing the international stocks outperforming U.S stocks. Mainly, they have lower valuations. They actually benefit from higher interest rates, whereas U.S. companies, it's more of a negative for them. I'd also note that value stocks are outperforming outside the U.S. and Europe. For example, value stocks this year are outperforming growth stocks. So I, see, I think we've seen that rotation in leadership from the last cycle where rates were lower for longer. They now might be higher forever. So you're, you're talking about international opportunities. Can you be more specific about where you could actually find value internationally? Yeah, I think when international markets are out of favor, you want to be very specific in those markets that you're focusing on, the countries and the sectors. Now, they're all in favor. Uh, Japan's stock market is up 28% this year. I know the yen has fallen, so we're not seeing that on a dollar basis, but 28%. Stocks in Italy, stocks in, in Spain are up over 20% this year. A lot of markets are outpacing the S&P 500. I don't think you need to be very specific. 
individual countries often trade like individual sectors. Germany is an auto ETF, basically. Japan's a financials ETF. Australia is a metals and mining ETF, essentially, if you look over the last 10 or 20 years. So rather than taking that specific sector risk, I'd favor a broader allocation to broad uh, ETFs or, or solutions or mutual funds that invest in the international markets. You don't have to be as specific right now because all of those markets are, are doing very well. Jeffrey, I know you also have emerging market currencies on your radar. Where in particular are you seeing strength and what do investors need to know on that front? This is an interesting story. So we are actually seeing hawkish cuts by central banks outside the U.S. This is fascinating. So uh, what we're seeing is that central banks are beginning to cut rates in some of these emerging market countries after leading the Fed and other major central banks on the upside over the last uh, couple of years. They're now leading them by six to 12 months on the downside, but they're not cutting rates as fast as inflation's falling. Uh, for example, Hungary's central bank this week lowered their policy rate by 75 basis points. That's a big cut, but down to 11.5, so it's still pretty high. And that's well ahead of the 9.9% rate of inflation in October and well ahead of the roughly 5% inflation that's expected next year. Hungary's foreign, that's their currency, is on track to finish 2023 as one of the best performing currencies this year. They've actually said they're going to continue to cut rates by 75 basis points at every meeting, but the currency has remained strong. In Poland, the Zloty reached its highest level since March of 2020 against the euro this week, uh, as they're even looking at, at rate cuts. And even in Mexico, the central bank has indicated it's thinking about a rate cut. All this is good news for EM stocks, which have been performing very strongly this year, but they've been a, a drag on a dollar rated basis. Now that's starting to turn around, they're actually picking up steam against the dollar, and that's adding to the returns on a dollar basis. So I'm excited by what I'm seeing in emerging markets here lately. Uh, setting China aside, a lot of these markets are really seeing strong performance now matched by strong currencies. All right, you covered a lot of ground there. Jeffrey Kleintop, Charles Schwab, always appreciate your insights. Thanks so much. Have a great Thanksgiving. See you.